So last class we started looking at uh, the linear one dimensional first order wave equation right that is where we that is where we left off. We were looking at a problem uh, let me just write the equation do u do t plus a do u do x equals 0 a is greater than 0 okay and we saw we called this uh, we also called it the advection equation. We also called it the advection equation, advection equation. So it was basically it captured the idea of just pure propagation. The propagation speed is A, right? The propagation speed is A. And we were looking at a problem. I sort of started talking about the boundary conditions but I did not quite state what the problem was so let me just state the problem okay. So we could have say a pipe of length L at the this of course is the x direction at the left hand side there is a valve and maybe there is hot water to the left of that okay or there is hot air to the left of that whatever fine one dimensional problem. This pipe may go on forever but we are only interested in a length of we are only interested in a length of pipe of length L okay the pipe could go on for quite some distance. So the idea is at t equals 0 we are going to open the valve okay right. So at T equals 0. So, what are the boundary conditions that we have and the initial conditions? So, at T equals 0, we have an initial condition. At T equals 0, the U throughout this pipe has a certain value, right? We can move the datum to that. You understand? So, we can move our reference temperature or whatever it is property that you are talking about. So, at T equals 0, U of x, comma 0 that is x comma t is 0 okay. So we are interested only in this length bear that in mind and for all t at x equals 0 right for all time for all time t greater than 0 in fact we do not know how long the water has been getting hot so we do not go there. Right. So for t greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0 if you want at x equals 0, u of 0 comma t equals we will always scale the problem equals 1 is that fine. So this is, a, this is the simple problem that we are talking about if you were to pose it in the xt plane, in the xt plane. So that is the length L, we have prescribed conditions, we have prescribed conditions from 0 to L on the x axis and we have prescribed conditions for all positive t that is basically what we have done okay is that fine and we know that our characteristics, our characteristics go out in this direction. So the characteristic that goes out here I do not care for right it is going out. So we know these characteristics go out in this direction. So this is the orientation of the characteristics okay is that fine everyone. So whatever is the value here on the axis is the value that is going to be propagated along the characteristic at the speed a. So yesterday I called this point x0, I will call it psi today for my own reasons. So what happens to this, what happens to this uh, function now? So the initial function, if I plot just the function, if I plot the function u versus x for the same length L, right, it is a rather, it is rather simple function. 
just to the left of it which we are not interested in apparently the function value is 1 right and then it drops to 0 and there is indeed a discontinuity at that point okay. And I do not actually care the fact the fact that there is a discontinuity if it bothers you you can choose some other we can choose something else right we can but let us start with this let us just start with this. So this valve is open because this is a problem we have been looking at so far the valve is open and what you would expect is that the water propagates left to right. So whatever value you have here is going to prop propagate out whatever value you have here I have not drawn the characteristic going from that step you have a step there that step is going to move along that characteristic is going to propagate along that characteristic is that fine. So in time as you go along this step is going to come out so at some time at some time t the step is going to propagate out. So what you would expect is if this were an animation you would expect that this step is going to travel right left to right is that fine right and if you think about it you have a tap you open the right you open the valve and hot water is going to travel and you would expect something like this to happen okay. So pure propagation that is all it picks up no diffusion nothing else no other physical phenomenon pure propagation there is no decay in the size of the step there is no smoothening out of the step nothing okay it is just going to propagate left to right is that fine is what okay. So this is this property is important so if you had instead of your initial condition instead of being uh, a step if it had been some other function you can imagine now that you can you can choose other functions. So uh, you can choose a function the initial function initial condition for example to be to go from some value right go down. So some value it can be anything I mean you can just pick right you can you can you can pick any initial condition that you want and that and that condition will be propagated it will just basically flow out of the pipe what I am trying to say is that if in your pipe you have whatever it is that you have right whatever there is a temperature distribution that water is going to flow out right. So if it turns out that the pipe for because it has been sitting there is warmer there is a region where it got warm due to conduction through the valve or whatever then when you open the valve it is all going to flow out okay. So this function is just going to propagate left to right fine. So you can try out a few different functions the other thing that you can do is at uh, you can try this out for t greater than or equal to 0 you can replace the function uh, x at x equals 0 you can replace the function 0 comma t instead of it being constant which is what I have done so far pick a function and see what happens. So you can take that to be say cos t or you can take this along with cos t or sin t right or try another one. So this is one function try a different function right 0 comma t equals cosine 2 t try various functions and see what happens okay try various functions these are varying in time see what happens is that fine okay let us get back to this picture so this characteristic a typical characteristic intersects the x coordinate right at a point psi yesterday's class I called it x0 today I will call it psi at a point psi. So what is the equation of this line right remember that uh, this line you are going to propagate a distance a in unit time right the, the property is being propagated at a speed a units a units per second. So, so it is going to be x is going to be psi plus a t in fact in reality the differential equation the differential equation that we are actually solving is dx dt equals a at t equals 0 at t equals 0 that tells you x equals psi that is what we are doing you understand and I am integrating that to get essentially x equals psi plus at 
because A is a constant this integrated out but I want to make that statement a little more precise right I want to be a little more careful with that okay because I will, I will use this fact later A, A in this case is a constant everywhere but what is more interesting to me is A is a constant along that characteristic A is a constant right but I want to say I want to put it in a peculiar fashion A is a constant along that characteristic that it happens to be constant everywhere else I do not care right okay so A is a constant along that characteristic and in fact it just turns out that X equals Psi plus AT is that fine okay so that is the equation of that line. Now so what does this equation do what have we discussed so far what this equation does is if on this length L you prescribe some function this equation will propagate that function because A is greater than 0 it propagates it left to right okay. So I repeat at T equals 0 if you prescribe U equals F of Psi U of x comma 0 equals f of psi this is going to be propagated how what is going to happen to this f so something of the form f of psi but what is psi psi in fact from our equation is x minus at okay. So given the initial condition so now we make the jump given the initial condition f of psi in fact given any function f right which has the appropriate derivatives as far as we are concerned then f of x minus at is a solution of this equation is that fine okay right and you can verify that what is do f do x. Do f do psi do psi do x chain rule right what is do f do t do f do psi do psi do t substitute it into that equation which is how you would verify whether it is a solution or not what is do psi do x. psi times 1 do psi do x is 1 and what is do psi do t times minus a is that okay everyone. So this is indeed a solution so you can just substitute there and you see that do f do t plus a do f do x equals 0 so it is satisfied the equation is satisfied okay so any function of this form any function of this form equation is satisfied so you remember where we started this earlier when we when we started off I said can we guess the solution right so now we are probing we are looking at there is a way by which we can construct a solution there is a way by which we can construct a geometrical way by which we can construct the solution using characteristics right those lines were called characteristics and using those lines we can actually construct the solution geometrically okay and from there maybe we can get some but now what we have done is we have seen from that just using a little analytic geometry that we are able to say that any function of this form is a solution as long as these derivatives make sense okay you can complain that I took a step function what what is going on right okay right we will see we, 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 will, we will encounter a lot of those situations but as long as these derivatives make sense as long as these derivatives make sense right something of this sort is going to be a solution everyone right. So uh, how do we do where, where do we go now I want to still be able to guess guess the solution we have a general form. I want I want something a little more specific okay so we will repeat what we did we will repeat what we did with Laplace's equation we can of course if you give me a function f of psi it is possible it is on a finite interval of length L if you give me a function f of psi 
then I can use possibly Fourier series I can use periodic extension okay and I can use Fourier series to represent this function okay. Why do I use Fourier series? Maybe I am getting a little ahead of myself if I look at this function dou f dou t so see please remember I am now I am trying to explain the process of how we go about guessing. See this equation is simple you can easily I am pretty sure it, you can sit down figure but the process that we go through is very important is more important okay. So I see first derivatives here so from my differential equations I am thinking exponential right I see first derivatives I am thinking exponential. So okay I am going to get an exponential but an exponential can go two ways an exponential can go two ways in this case the function value did not decrease in this case the function value did not decrease right. So I do not want an exponential and the form of an e power minus x kind of a thing because the, the function value will decrease I want only pure propagation because that is what this equation represents fine which means that so if I have an oscillation it is going to continue oscillating that is what it, that, is, that oscillation is going to be propagated that is all that is going to happen okay. So the minute you say oscillation not decaying we have something that looks like a Fourier series is that fine. So what we will do is we will represent if you give f of, f of psi I can write this f of psi in terms of the Fourier series okay. And how does that go? That goes over a summation over n. I'm not going to bother with the limits right now. Okay, go from minus infinity to plus infinity because I'm going to write it in a. Or uh, because I'll take it from zero to l. So I went from minus l to plus l. It depends on the lengths of the interval. You have to be careful. So I'll just leave it vague. I'll just leave it as n, right? Depending on what exactly we pick, the n range will have to be picked appropriately. Whether it goes from zero to infinity or minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, so we then we have a n exponent i n wave number two pi psi by l is that fine everyone is that fine. Okay, and then you can do you can take L is two pi, you know the two pi's go away, all that kind of stuff. That's fine. So you can have a function of this sort as a solution. So let me swing over here to the other side. So what we have is we'll get back to the. So what it basically says is that my u, in general, I can write it as summation over n. A n exponent i n two pi x minus a t by l. Fine. Okay. So we started off. We started off looking at this equation, right? So, and by sequences, sequence of investigations, trying to find out what it is, we were able. We were lucky not always possible that we are able to do this but we are lucky we are actually able to guess the form of the solution okay a general form of the solution fine okay. So we can construct it geometrically using characteristics or given the initial conditions you can try to see whether you can use Fourier series to actually construct the solution okay right are there any questions. This course of course is not about it is not about analytic solutions we are interested in analytic solutions only because we want to know how the solution to the equation behaves so that when we do the numerics we are able to compare the compare it with the solution right and where the numerics does not work that I mean I am sorry where the where you do not have an analytic solution right uh, generally then we will appeal to some theory of differential equations so that we can figure out right theory of differential equations for example when we talked about Laplace's equation having a maxima or a minima on the boundaries that is the kind of a result that would come out of theory of differential equations right. Then we would appeal to theory of differential equations saying this is a problem that I have does the mathematical theory tell me anything about the solution before I even solve it okay that is that is what the theory does for you it will tell you something about the solution before you even solve it okay it is very important right. So the theory part is very important 
So then we do the numerics and as a first cut then you can compare to see whether what the theory has told you is satisfied by the numerics. Okay, in this case we have constructed a solution because this is actually a simple model equation for the kinds of equations that we are going to solve at a later point and we will run into some of the difficulties that you would run into with say, say the full Navier-Stokes equations or whatever, you will run into them with this equation, right. There are, there are certain elements of this equation that so we start with a simpler equation for that reason, okay. So we have a solution but now to the basic point of this course, I do not want to solve this analytically. If I did not know the analytic solution, how would I solve it numerically? What would the what would be the method that we would use to solve it numerically? Fine, okay. The usual progression would be well, we use central differences for Laplace's equation that seemed to work. Why not use central differences here? That is, you use for the equation do u do t plus a do u do x equals 0. You use a central difference representation for this and a central difference representation for that. But I look at the boundary condition and you know I, I at t equals 0 I have a condition but I do not have anything beyond that. I have a concern okay and for the central difference here yeah on the right hand side there seems to be some issue but I, I will ignore that warning right now. But it is clear that I, I, I do not have if I am going to if I am going to march in time I am given conditions at t equals 0 I have nothing beyond behind that right. So if I were to draw grid lines like I did for Laplace's equation if I were to draw grid lines I really do not know how to take I, I really do not know you know whether I do not know this value I do not want to guess that value the future value that would be like guessing the future value you understand I, the, 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 there seems to be a pro issue here and I do not want to start here because then I do not know anything behind it. If I represent the equation here, I do not know anything behind it, right. I am only I am only giving you a complaint. I am not saying that it is impossible to use central differences, right. I am sure we I am sure we can think of ways of getting around it, but my objective is that is not my objective, right. So I have central differences here. I want to keep life easy. So I will use a forward difference here. Is that okay? Is that fine? That seems reasonable that I use a forward difference, I use these two points, I use a forward difference at that point, I use a forward difference at this point and I use a central difference for the spatial derivatives, okay. So for any arbitrary grid point, for any arbitrary point, okay. So P, Q, we can use central differences, so I will zoom in on this, so for any arbitrary point PQ and as we did in Laplace's equation maybe at least in the x direction we will take equivalent rules right the t direction also we can take equivalent rules but we will see what happens here. So PQ this is P plus 1 Q this is P minus 1 Q this is PQ plus 1 these are the points. Right, I have gone with PQ because I have already used i for square root of minus 1, right. Up here I have already used i for square root of minus 1, so I do not want any confusion that is why I have gone to PQ, okay. Okay, so this very often in books, textbooks and so on you will you will see this referred to as a stencil, okay. This is just for you to get the jargon, you will see this referred to as a stencil. Right, so this stencil occurs everywhere. So you can take, you can take these four points and presumably solve wave equation. And what we are doing here, very important, what we propose to do is we propose to represent the wave equation at the point PQ using PQ and these three other points. Okay, so do u t do t, do u t do t, for difference. U P Q plus one minus U P Q divided by delta T plus the truncation error, which I'm not, so I should actually write an approximate there plus a truncation error. Do U X do U do X is approximately U P plus one Q minus U P minus one Q 
divided by 2 delta x is that fine so what do we have substituting into our governing equation so you have u p q plus 1 minus u p q divided by delta t plus a times u p plus 1 q minus u p minus 1 q divided by 2 delta x should be approximately 0 we set it equal to 0 and this is the objective this is this is what I am trying to get this is the objective the objective is u p q plus 1 can then be written as I take everything else you will notice this is only one that is a time level q plus 1 all of these are at time level q. So all the ones that are at time level q I am going to shift over to the right hand side so I have u p q minus a times u plus 1 q u p minus 1 q by 2 delta x. I miss something a delta t a delta t is that fine is that fine everyone so this is what we have so in fact this expression a delta t by delta x is going to appear so often we are going to give it a, a symbol we are going to call it sigma this appears so often that we are going to call it sigma so that this is going to be u p q plus 1 is u p q minus sigma by 2 u p plus 1 q minus u p minus 1 q okay we have we have what what I would call an automaton right so give, given something at time level q you can then increment it to the next time level you, you understand what I am saying you can you can find out what happens at the next time given at q plus 1 you can go to the next time level right so at each time level you can you can move forward you can move forward you have an automaton so if you are given an initial condition you are given an initial condition you can march that initial condition forward in time right q plus 1 is given explicitly in terms of explicitly in terms of terms of expressions that are occurring at level at time level time q time level q okay so this scheme is called an explicit scheme the scheme is called an explicit scheme simply because you have q plus 1 occurring and this is these are all at time level q we are able to solve for it it does not occur in an implicit fashion is that fine it does not occur in an implicit fashion so this is called uh, an explicit scheme explicit scheme yeah. sometimes you will hear it being called an Euler explicit scheme we will call it forward time central space FTCS forward forward time central space is that fine okay everyone right so you can actually code this you can go ahead and code this right but this is different this is a little different from Laplace's equation so we are going to do a little analysis right there are two things that we have got going for us now one is when we did the stability analysis for Laplace's equation we substituted exponentials for the error term we substituted exponentials for the error term and the error check whether the error term decays or not what happens to the error term okay in this case we have a similar set there there in that case that was they were if you think about if you remember back they were Eigen functions of the exponentials were Eigen functions of the Laplace operator in this case they actually represent the solution the equation is a linear equation the equation is a linear equation you understand remember linear equation basically means equation is linear basically means that the equation is linear basically means that if you have if L is linear right what does it say L of u plus v is L of u plus L of v right L of u plus v is L of u plus L of v fine okay that is basically what so L again 
and usual stuff I mean the L of alpha u plus beta v is L of alpha L of u plus beta L of v. I mean this is this is the usual description of something being linear right which is why we know that uh, Ax equals Ax y equals Ax or Ax equals y is linear right or the classical when we talk about a straight line this is this is the this is the usual trap that people fall into. So if you take the equation y equals and this is an aside y equals Ax plus b this is not linear right linear it necessarily passes through the origin this is not linear it is a straight line it is a straight line it is not linear. So if you say linear wait a minute it is a straight line does not that mean linear if that confuses you then think of curvy linear right linear all it means is a line curvy linear means curved line you do you understand what I am saying so but in this case linear this is this is this is a, this is a technical term right the function is linear the operator is linear basically means that L of alpha u plus beta v is alpha L of u plus beta L of v okay it is a very precise definition as a consequence of which y equals ax plus b is not linear though it is a straight line okay unless b equals 0 fine okay. So that equation is linear we ask the question again so if you have do u do t or just for just to keep this just to keep this clean let me write a very general equation. So if you have do v do t plus a do v do x equals some h of x could be h of x comma t but h of x keep it as h of x right the solution is v the solution is v okay the solution is v but if v is disturbed I, I perturb v it has an error right in Laplace's equation case I called it e in this case, case I choose to call the error u for obvious reasons that I already have an equation for u. So if the solution if we are, if our candidate solution is v plus u if our candidate solution is v plus u okay and you substitute into that equation because this is a linear equation what is going to happen what is the equation governing you the our original zero. equation you understand what I am saying. So if you if I substitute this back in I get dou v dou t plus dou u dou t plus a dou v dou x plus dou u dou x equals h of x I am sorry a dou v oh it is very important a dou u dou x thank you right this combination this this and this the combination of these three satisfy each other they knock each other out the combination of the three knock, knock each other out leaving us dou u dou t plus a dou u dou x equals 0 as the equation that governs the the error term looks the same suspiciously the same as the original equation right and you would expect that because it is a linear equation even in Laplace's equation case the equation governing the error was the same as the equation governing our original function our solution is that fine okay right so what do we have we go from here so I want to substitute now in dou u dou t plus a dou u dou x equals 0 which is now the equation for our for our error and I want to ask the question when does this when does this when does this decay for this particular scheme that we have chosen does it decay okay for the particular scheme that we have chosen does it decay I want what was our u use like summation over an a n exponent i n 2 pi by l x minus a t what do you say okay and because the equation is linear right this equals summation of u n over n right where the individual u n's where the individual u n's are a n exponent 
i n 2 pi by l x minus a t okay we will play the same game we played for Laplace's equation we will say for which wave number is there a wave number is there a bad wave number is there right if we can say that for the worst for the for the wave number which has the largest gain as we march in time so this is what we are doing we have a we have we have a, pert, a, a perturbation or an error u in our solution okay we want to know that if I march from time t equals 0 to t equals delta t 2 delta 3 3 delta 3 so on as I march is that error going to grow or is that error going to die out is, is that make does that make sense is the error going to grow or is the error going to die out that is the question that we are asking so basically what we will do is we will pick one wave number then ask the question for the wave number which has the largest gain what happens right or is there a wave number that has a problem that is essentially what we are looking for is there some particular wave number for which we are going to have a problem okay. So because uh, because you know I have already got subscripts p and q right so you please allow me to drop this n we, have, we understand between us we understand now that I am going to take a look at the nth wave number right so you just otherwise we will just be carrying along a lot of right a lot of these uh, a lot of these subscripts. So let us just assume that we understand that I am dealing with the nth wave number. So what do I have now my automaton was u p q plus 1 is u p q minus sigma by 2 u p plus 1 q minus u p minus 1 q. And as I did earlier, what is the relationship between u p plus 1 q and u p q? So if my x is p delta x, right, if my x is p delta x and q could be, you know, it could, we do not really need it, but q could be, uh, t could be q delta t you could keep delta t constant if you want but it does not matter if my x is p delta x and t is q delta t okay if my x is p delta, delta x t is q delta t then what do we have what do we have up plus 1 q equals where do where do I where do I get this now a n exponent i n x is p plus 1 delta x minus a t at the time level I will leave this as t okay and this is nothing but a n you can just check so it is e power exponent i n I forgot a 2 pi by l i n 2 pi by l delta x into u p q fine and in a similar fashion because there is a p delta x here which is x this is basically x plus delta x right this is basically x plus delta x then u p minus 1 q in a similar fashion is exponent in the minus i n 2 pi by l delta x u p q fine. So I can now substitute into my forward time central space upq plus 1 is upq minus sigma by 2 up plus 1 is this one this is a mess but the two these two expressions are the same so I will just redefine something I will redefine that as theta equals n delta x 2 pi by l right I mean I could take L equals 2 pi and that will go away it does not matter. So this is e power i theta minus e power minus i theta into upq 
Is everybody with me? Yeah. I can divide through by UPQ, right? I divide through by UPQ and I get the gain G as UPQ plus 1 divided by UPQ. One minus sigma by two. What is e power i theta minus e power minus i theta? Two i sine of theta. Remember, I'm using Euler's formula. E power i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. Fine. So this gives me the gain as being one minus i sigma sin theta is that good news or bad news what do you say some new news so we want the gain the magnitude of the gain to be less than 1 right we want mod g to be less than 1 we want mod g to be less than 1 okay but what is mod g? What is the magnitude of g? Mod g is or mod g squared to be less than 1. What is mod g squared? 1 plus sin squared theta, sigma squared, 1 plus sigma squared sin squared theta. See the only parameters that we have to choose, right? Now this brings this whole thing start you know we now face the fact you cannot change A. The only parameters that you have to choose are delta x and delta t okay. So uh, sure I mean theta depends on delta x and so on but there will be that wave we know that there is a highest wave number that we can represent right I mean so that all of that is all of that is very clear we have no problem issue with that. So the only parameter that you can change is change is sigma right it is not complex I mean it is real. So sigma squared we are stuck with it am I making sense we are, we are stuck with it. So sigma squared there is no sigma sigma value for which this is going to be less than 1 so this does not work for us theta equals 0 yeah it equals 1 right but theta equals 0 is that DC component essentially. So theta equals it does not help us we are not getting anything right is that fine. So forward time central space FTCS is unconditionally unstable for be very careful now very very careful when applied to one dimensional linear first order wave equation. Fine, yeah, you have a question? Why should mod g be less than 1? See, when you go from time, when you go from time q to q plus 1, if you go from time q to q plus 1, if mod g is greater than 1, right? So, we are, or you are basically look at this as a sequence. So, you have a, you are generating a sequence, I will leave out the p part, you are generating a sequence which is uq. You are generating a sequence of u's indexed on q and we are asking the question does this converge and we in fact wanted to go to 0. U, u in this case is the is the error right v was our original solution u in this case is the error and we are asking the question does u go to 0. U is not, u is not the error in v right u is the homogeneous part of the solution. u is the error in v. But yeah. like even, I mean, you can have a u which is non-zero. It can still satisfy the equation. You can have a u which is non-zero in, in the La Laplace equation case because uh, we have a unique solution for Laplace equation given about the condition. U equal to zero is the e equal to zero is the only solution. But here you can have like, the decimal found solution which is non-zero for this same. You. U can be a solution which is not but it does not satisfy our original equation does it satisfy our original equation including the boundary condition 
well if it has homogeneous boundary conditions and homogeneous then you can add it, then you can add it right and then the question is what happens at the initial condition. So it has to be 0 at the initial condition and somehow it magically came up you understand okay right. What we are basically saying is even from our numerics typically you see where, where, where these things come from is even from our this the source of this error it is not that there is an error that you have injected into the solution and does it decay there is a source of the error which comes from our say for, from our round off right from various reasons there is a source of error that you have what happens to that source of error right it is no different it is no different from the whistling that you hear in an amplifier the whistling that you hear from an amplifier it is not that there has to be a there has to be a input just thermal noise there is thermal noise in the resistors in the circuitry that thermal noise is enough so the issue is the question that you have is it is not that you have a the disturbance is there you have the thermal noise which is the equivalent the equivalent here would be I have round off error at every step I have these errors I am making these errors what I want to know is do those errors errors grow or those errors do not grow. So in a sense I am not actually answering the global question what you are talking about is answering the global question right. So the, the uh, stability analysis that we are doing both what we have done here what we are doing now and what we did in Laplace's equation is a local one we are only asking at a given grid point what is happening to the what is happening to the solution if I were to integrate it out but not for all x am I making sense okay say I see where you are coming from you are saying it is a homogeneous uh, the equation this equation is a homogeneous equation it basically does not disturb you can add any any amount of this homogeneous equation solution that you want some constant time this homogeneous equation but normally in your differential equations if you look at it the way it works is the homogeneous part actually takes care of the boundary conditions in this case even the boundary conditions are 0. So in a sense this does not this is this is truly sort of in the null space of that operator it does it is right it does nothing okay but potentially if it grows it can blow up the problem that you have is if I the difficulty that I have is if this if this uq if the gain is greater than 1 the sequence that I get is diverging. So I am going farther and farther away from my v that satisfies the original equation. No, no, there is no, there is, there is no issue of boundary condition here because I am only working at a grid point. So, so basically, this what analysis we did now will give us a general solution. No, no, I am not looking at a solution. I am not looking at a solution. That's the whole point. No, no, no. We are not looking at the solution is v. The solution is v. The only question that we are asking is: Is there a wave number that is that is unstable in a sense? Is there a wave number that is going to grow that is going to become unbounded if I disturb that wave number or there is an error in that wave number is there a name wave number that is going to grow that is all that, that is the only thing that is happening is that fine right. So that is that, that, basically it so we are generating at this point p so though I have removed it I will stick it back there at this point p we are generating a sequence indexed on q and we are asking the question what happens now uh, at the point at that x location what happens as q goes but it is a it is a the analysis that we are doing is a local analysis is not a global analysis maybe one maybe at a, in one of the other classes I will do a global analysis where I take the boundary conditions also into account right that is really what we should do okay here is sort of I beg off saying well this we are engineers this is you know we get this this gives and, and this is un, this is already unstable forget doing the full thing this is already unstable right we are already out of luck this is already unstable fine and you can try to implement this and you will see that it is unstable try to implement this so this analysis actually works okay this analysis actually works which is not justification enough I cannot just say that it works and therefore it is right but what I am saying is this analysis actually so this gives you this cues the sequence of cues that you are going to generate using that automaton which is FTCS if there is any disturbance it is just going to blow up is that fine it is going to diverge if there is the smallest disturbance that disturbance will grow that is the key fine is that okay everyone okay. So this is where, this is where we are FTCS did not work okay. So the next thing is next obvious possibility is we did forward time why do not we try forward space 
now we are groping in the dark if it did not work now you know now we are sort of groping around trying to figure out what to do. So, forward time we use forward time let us try forward space is that fine. So, Monday's class we will do forward time forward space FTFS right and let us hope that it works fine okay I will see you then.